New York City is the most visited place in the United States. The area's three major airports move about 140 million people in and out each year. Coordinating this mass movement of people, planes and services, requires around-the-clock attention. More than 3,000 flights fly in and out of the region daily. It's a growing number that these aging travel hubs weren't designed to handle. Behind the times, subpar, honestly, a disgrace to the New York, New Jersey area. The old Terminal B was constructed for about 8 million passengers per year and was serving closer to 16 million passengers per year. Now, all three airports need major upgrades. This is how New York manages one of the most complex airport systems on Earth. The Federal Aviation Administration's air traffic control team is housed in a TRACON tower in Westbury, New York. Here, a team of air traffic controllers guide approaching and departing aircrafts, connecting them to the local airport towers. There are five or even six airports that are, have lights arriving and departing. In normal conditions, the region can handle up to 270 flights per hour. But this number decreases if the FAA needs to add distance between planes on approach, if there are any slight deviations in and out of the area. But despite this careful coordination, New York's airports are plagued by delayed flights. In 2019, only 66% of flights flying into Newark were on time, less than the national average of about 77%. These delays are a big reason why all three airports regularly land on the list of lowest rated airports in the United States. To keep up, New York's airports are continually demolishing, renovating, and constructing new terminals, which must also account for critical changes in security, technology, and evolving passenger needs. This is the baggage handling system at LaGuardia's Terminal B. It's one of the most advanced in the country. It takes about 3,250 bags per hour. It spans across three floors. Uh, we have five CTX machines with space for a future 6-1 if necessary in the future. And we have 17 sortation piers downstairs for the airlines to recollect that baggage. It's an intricate system that most flyers will never see. When passengers check in, they expect their bag is going to make it with them on their flight. So this is the vessel that gets that to happen. The airlines are responsible for inducting the baggage. So upstairs on level three at the ticket counters, they physically put the bag, the tag on, and put it on the belt. Once loaded onto the belt, luggage travels down to the next level for security inspection. Here we have our two sort feared lines. These lines feed all the bags that were inducted up on level three departures and it sorts it to our, one of our available x-ray machines. So it's round robin style, the first available machine. That's where the bag will go. And the diverters here will help push the bag to that CTX machine. These are the five x-ray machines. They're smooth detection, state-of-the-art x-ray machines. Uh, they scan the bag for an image. Anything that's prohibited, according to the TSA, will flag in that image. The system flags about 10% of luggage. These suitcases are transferred by state-of-the-art robots called Mobile Inspection Tables, or MITs, to the checked baggage resolution area. They wait right outside the room for any alarmed bag to drop on them. Once they drop, they make their way into the room. They go and they dock up at the first available TSA agent station that's active. While they're docked, they're actually, actually charging. The TSA goes ahead, does their inspection. Once they give it the clear, or the second option is to reinsert, which means they just want another image to the x-ray machine, they indicate that on the mobile inspection table, and then the table makes its way outside of the room and then goes and drops the bag either on the clear or the reinsert line. With 55 MIT robots, LaGuardia's system is one of the largest in the US, and it fundamentally changed the way the TSA manages baggage. This intricate system is just one cog in LaGuardia's terminal network.
New York once led the way in aviation. But today, the city has fallen behind. That's why the Port Authority invested $4 billion in LaGuardia updates in 2015. Every single passenger terminal, with the exception of the landmark Marine Air Terminal, is being torn down to the ground with new facilities being built in its place. We wanted to design something that worked really well for airlines, functionally, and as well for the passenger, functionally. Intuitive wayfinding, ease of flow, in our clear sight lines to destination, view lines out to the gates. One of the latest innovations was constructed over the old terminal and opened in mid-2021. With our new design, where we actually go up through our bridges up and over top of the taxiway system, we're able to add two miles of taxiway system to the airport, which is two miles of operating flexibility for aircraft to move around, avoid congestion, and move independently of each other so that one aircraft going to a gate doesn't have to wait for another aircraft maneuvering on a gate. The new terminal is set to finish by 2022, and it's not the only project in the works. The Port Authority is overseeing an investment of $20 billion in all three of the New York area airports over the next four years. These future forward projects aim to prepare the city for a new era of flight. But the city is also looking back. How can New York, once again, become a leader in aviation? In the 1960s, air travel was a luxury. The airport was the place to be. People would often put on their finest clothes to go to the airport for a night of plane watching and fine dining, whether they had a ticket or not. The TWA Flight Center, which opened in 1962, embodied this golden age of flight. And it was an architectural masterpiece then but it didn't stand the test of time as it was uh, too small of a building for modern aviation. By 2001, the airline filed for bankruptcy and the flight center closed its doors. But now, 20 years on, in an attempt to help renew JFK's golden era image, the TWA flight center is finally open again. This time, as a hotel, We worked with 22 government agencies to restore the old building, which is a National Historic Landmark, to build two new hotel towers right next to it. So the iconic original building is our lobby. We have a 200,000 square foot lobby, and the hotel buildings uh, flank it on either side. Some of the lighting is quite iconic in the 66,000 square foot volume, and the, the swooping shells it was built to represent a bird in flight. So you can see the beak coming off the front of the building and the shells, and so it's, you know, the building looks like an uh, airplane in flight. Projects like the TWA Flight Center Revitalization Project aim to welcome a new era of commercial flight for New York City. I think the economics of flying have changed. You can now fly 200 people at 50 bucks a seat and make money. New York's airports have always been known for something. From innovation. Now when you're past security, you can go to airline lounges, you can go to restaurants, you can sit in parks, special features, enjoy the art. To delays and outdated terminals. The city is now trying to recapture the world-class status its airports once had. It looks to improve not only functionality, but the passenger experience too. LaGuardia has already made strides with renovations. 
and Newark and JFK are on its heels. As global air travel continues to grow, New York plans to grow with it. There are talks of a new public transit line with direct access to LaGuardia from the city and a supersonic jet from JFK to London that will fly passengers in between in as little as three and a half hours. We're going from back of the class, outdated, truly a disgrace, to moving to best in class, from worst to first. That's our framework.